is according to Romans 7 and Romans 2 and 7. He who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Meaning when you start hearing through the Spirit, it's not going to sound right. From a, from a chronicle standpoint of view, what man gives you. It's going to be what God gives you. He says over here in John 14, parallel this with John 8 and 23 to 24, he says it like this in John 14, 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, in the Father in me, or else, remember that word, or else, that's the one, the part where you, you, you begin to doubt, or else, believe me for the works. Believe me for the sake of the works themselves believe now listen to me believe me that i am in the father first you got to believe that he's in the father let me say something right there to the point we got to break this down we got to look at this believe me that i'm in the father and the father is in what me in other words you can't accept jesus if you can't accept the father you can't accept the father if you don't accept the son you, you can't switch the two around you got to believe and understand that that the father sent forth the son the sun came, and we're going to get back to the John 12, to be a wheat grain to the earth. That if he, as he died, he will multiply. In other words, Jesus was only limited to the regions in which he was in. You look at the certain areas Jesus went around. He was only limited to that region. But to that region. But as he get begin to die off, and it's time come to hand that he must die. Remember, he said, the greater gift I'm going to leave with you. And now we look around the world, we see the Holy Spirit everywhere. We can be over in Australia, we see the Holy Spirit moving. We can be over in Africa, we can see the Holy Spirit moving. Africa can be looking over in the United States, they can see the Holy Spirit moving. Every Sunday morning, you can see the power of the Holy Spirit moving in the presence of certain ministries and certain churches at the same time. This is what Jesus is speaking and saying about the area, about the process of the true vine. In other words, he's designed each and every one us to spread fruit. And as we spread fruit, we are designed to multiply the earth. In other words, every, every good tree bears good fruit and every bad tree bears bad fruit there are some bad trees and there are some good trees and the bible said you know can a can an apple tree bear uh, oranges can an orange tree bear apples in other words you can't be other than what whatever god genetically engineered and designed you to be that's what you're going to be he speaks this over in the verse about the belief system this belief system leaves us understanding that this is all according to mark 9 and 23 about when jesus came off the mountain of transfiguration the man had to possess son notice this what he says in other for your man to be healed, you got to believe in him. But disciples, as if they was nonchalant, Jesus called them, he called them the three stooges, really. He should have, he should have lined every one of them and slapped them like the three stooges. That's what he should have done. Because they've been walking with Christ for so long. And now this man having a demon-possessed son, and they just coming off the glory of God, off trigger uh, mountain uh, transfiguration. And this man has a position, has a problem with his son. They should have been able to do it through faith, just just like with you. You you know, you know when you think about this and you look at it in a clear understanding, you got to understand that in the midst of where you are. And I'm not saying to doubt the preacher, doubt the pastor, but you know, when he speaks the word to you, you got to believe that the power has already been given to you. You got to understand that you don't need nobody to grease you down. You grease your own self down. You lay hands on yourself and you believe and declare and decree by the word of God that whatever is it whatever it is that's in your life God has given you the ability according to the power of Romans 4 and 17 to call things that be not to if they were remember you're part of the Abrahamic covenant God has given you the ability to have a Luke 10 and 19 he said I've given you power I've given you power to tread upon every situation, every circumstance, and over all the power of the enemy. We don't want to get too far, of course, but we want to read, want to stay right here in the book of John. I want to see you that. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Look, here's the part. Or else, believe me for the sakes of the work themselves. In other words, if you're not going to believe me, Look the things that the Father's doing through me. Because I can't do nothing until I go to my Father. You can't do it until you go to the Father. You have to see God first. You have to see the kingdom first. That's why the model press says, Our Father in heaven, how there be thy name. Let the kingdom come. The will of the Father has to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You call in that what's in heaven down here on earth. In other words, you actually been what we call an ambassador. Paul was an ambassador. You are an ambassador. You're sent on this earth. To actually minister the word of God, according to the book of uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5, you've been given a gift. And you need to understand why to use your gift in utilizing it in this earth. Meaning that you, you just don't give your life to this world alone. You give it to Christ that you may bring them out of the world. 
that they may understand and realize in the life that God has given you is really more than what you can see. It's really more than what you can able to understand. The Bible declares and decrees that when he gives you the gift, he's giving you the power with it. He's giving you the ability to call things. He's giving you the ability to tramp upon serpents and scorpions. The Bible says he's giving you the words that come out of your mouth according to Isaiah 11.55. So forth, the words that come out of God's mouth comes out of your mouth. It will not go void. If you can believe, this all comes in Mark 9 23. That's why he said, if you don't believe in me, believe me for the works that I do. He goes on in the book of John 14. He said, much assured I say to you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Notice what he's saying. Greater works than he will do because I go to my father. Let's stop it right there, the Holy Spirit. And let's come on back over here to the book of um, John chapter 12. Let's, let's stay right here. Let's keep our fingers planted right there on John 14 and 12. And let's go back over here to John 12. And let's see what the word of God declares and decrees according to the kingdom. And getting us to uh, get our minds together and uh, see what the spirit has to say according to the church. Amen. Now, now, when we look at this, and I'm, I'm going to take it from the top, but yet not forsaken, John 14, uh, 11 to 12, about the believing in the Father. Now, Jesus talks about the, the, the fruit of the grain. Now, we're going to start it just for, the, for clarity. We're going to start from uh, John 20, John 12 and 20, to the actual uh, 26th verse. And I'm going to read through this, and I'm going to pick out the points, what I'm showing you that I'm speaking here. He said, Now there were in a certain Greek among those who came, after worship at the feast, there came Philip, who was born of Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now they wish to. They didn't say we're going to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. In other words, you got to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You just can't come in the presence of God any kind of way. So in a certain way, you got to solidify yourself, bow down to him, and understand that, God, I'm calling on you that you open up your arms to me. It says in the 22nd verse of John 12, Philip came and told Andrew, and turned Philip. Philip, uh, in the way, he came and told Andrew, and turned to Philip, and they told Jesus. But Jesus answered and said that the hour has come, that the Son of Man, the Son of Man, should be glorified. Listen to this: the Son of Man should be glorified. In other words, what I came here to do, I'm going to show you. Just what I come here to do, I'm going to put this in retrospect to the point to make it so clear to you. That I have to die. If I don't die, then you won't receive that what I have going, what, what I'm giving on to you. That what I'm giving on to you is the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, once I hit you, it's gonna be like a mega blast. It's gonna stretch throughout all the world. But I'm gonna have to die that many may be saved. Jesus being the wheat will save many. But Jesus said, first I have to lay down my life. When I lay down my life, it's gonna be laid, I'm gonna be the last sacrificial lamb. That when I lay down my life. Everybody's going to see the right to the tree of life. He goes on and says over in verse 24, Most assuredly I say to you, unless the grain, which is Jesus Christ, the wheat falls unto the ground and dies, it remains alone. In other words, if you just see a seed out there laying on the ground on planet, it just becomes a seed. And you really get the revelation of what it says about the hard stony and rockies when the seed soil begin to sow the seed. When you see seeds that fall from the tree and they don't get planted, they just kind of set on the top. It's like these little walnuts and chestnuts. You see them begin to crack open. That's why you see them withering away. The cars run over them and they, get, they fall onto the pavement. And it's just like some of us. When we think about some of us, some of us fall from the tree, fall from grace. And by falling from grace, it's not that God is trying to hurt us. He's trying to give us that opportunity that when we fall from his hands, that we fall to earth with the understanding and realize that we have to die from our ways. We have to die to the earth. By dying to the earth, we, became a, we, become, we, we become new creatures. The Bible declares and decrees over in the book of first, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All old things has passed away. Once I have that life as being that acorn or that pear or that whatever I am on the tree, once I fall to the earth, like we all do right now, we all got to lay in the box one day. But if we die, we can't receive that, that, that mortification that God has given us and declared unto us that we all will live one more time once again without having any sickness or disease. Now, I'm not saying in your life now that you got to die to have seen the abundance of Christ. The Bible says declares and decree that you will have life and have it more abundantly right here on earth. But you're going to have to die to the spirit in which you're living in that you may understand that God has got a greater and better work to do with you and through you. He goes on and says, though, here. 
I say to you, unless the wheat of the, unless the wheat of grain, and the wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces. Am I speaking? It produces much grain. Come, come, come on, somebody. Look at this. Listen to this. Listen to this right. I want to show you something here. Unless grain dies, a seed dies. In other words, put it, when a seed dies, it produces fruit. It can only produce fruit by the death. The principle here is true even when we look at nature. When we talk about how nature, as I talked about the trees and the, the, the different kind of uh, nuts and different kind of leaves, they fall to the ground, look like it's just an old crumbly, but that leaf represents a fruit. It represents the fact that when it goes to the ground, it's got to be replanted. Whether it's pounded in the ground over winter time, scorched by the sun, it's got to die and break up. And then it breaks itself out and it becomes more nutrients to the soil to help produce forth that what is growing up to make that tree what it is. In other words, nature says if you plant it, it's got to grow. And if, it does, if, it's, if it's not planted through the natural, through the physicality of point, if it's not planted, then what? It will stay on the ground and it will wither away. Jesus declared in the creed, according to the book of Matthew, unless a seed falls to the ground, it will by no means gain root unless it's planted. In other words, when the seed soil went out to sow the seed, he gave it. And some of us are going to be just like the trees that we see in our front yard every day. Some of the seeds fall in the middle of the sidewalk. We walk down the street as we walk with our husbands, walk on our wives during our course of time. We're walking at night after dinner and we see the seeds that fell to the ground. And we see different kind of acorns and kind of what chestnuts, whatever it may be, fell to the ground. Some fall close, some fall far. But those who fall close have an opportunity to be replanted again. In other words, life is almost like a cycle. We see children come. We got a young man who just come into our life right now. My my daughter's daughters. We just had her had her, her third baby, and, 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 and his name is Miles. He's only six to seven days old. But in other words, the process of planting the seed that he may come forth gives a whole generational idea with the understanding that he's living a recurrence life. Also, as he grows, we pass on. As as we pass on, others grow. But in the process of going through that process, of what process of going through that, we got to understand that we want to have our life right. Because when we leave here, it, this ain't the end. Some people feel this is it for them. They don't live their life to the fullest like the rich man. We talk about in Luke 16. That man lived his life to the fullest. He saw Lazarus laying there at his feet. He knew he could have done something for that man, but he, he, he feared not. To do anything for him, nor did he pay any kind of interest to him because he was more he was more attended to his riches. But the time came that when they were separated, we know the story how Elijah went into Abraham's bosom and he went over into hell. Well, that's just nothing another story. But in the process of speaking, Jesus was first speaking of himself that he has to die for the wheat to produce more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is designed to move forth. It's, the, it's, it's designed to engineer and develop that, it be, that, that, that the earth be more plentiful with people who have an ear to hear the Spirit and do the work what God has called them to do. Am I speaking to anybody this afternoon? God has designed you and engineered you not to fade but to live. The Bible says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundant. But hold on a second. But in the midst of you having life, you're not to just live all your pleasures to this life. You got to give some of your life or more joy of your life to what God called you to do. And then the word of God says in, in, in the book of Matthew 6 and 33, then I'll add these things on to you. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted like Twizzlers. The Bible said, give him, give, seek he first the kingdom. And then everything and all things will be added unto you. The most of the time, and I hear in the spirit, most of the time, you who have businesses, you have music industries, you are making contacts, you're trying to make all kind of efforts to make yourself be something that you're not. God said, because you never was obedient to the first project I put you through. But you're spending money and all kinds of recording equipment. You're out there buying all kind of buildings. You're out there buying all kind of clothes. You're out trying to look good before the people. But God said, there's a crack in your foundation. That crack could be that you're not coming to the point to what God really wants you to be. You know, the body said bitter and sweet can't come out of the same fountain. John 1 and 8 says that, 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 that you be, you double-minded. You be like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And you got to realize and understand that in your life, don't think you will receive anything from God himself. It's been decreed and declared. And if you don't, unless you die as a grain of wheat that falls to the earth, you by no means have the ability to produce fruit. In other words, multiply that what God is putting on the other. They may have a tree, a right to the tree of life. He goes on and says over here in, in, in the book of John 12 and 25, he said, who loves, 
He who loves, listen to this, he who loves his life will lose it. I had to pause there because you got to think about that. He said he, he's talking about individuals. If your relationship was not with Christ and you love yourself more than you love Christ, then, then that's a problem because he wants to buy supplies, your daily needs, your daily uh, living every day. He, he makes you to be able to get up. He has the blood running.